is basic instruction for how to get right with God. I'll tell you, you got to clean up your life. They're wrong. That is not what the Bible is about. The Bible is primarily a story. It is a story of a prince who sets out to reclaim his lost treasure. And this story is real. It is as real as the chair that you're sitting on. When we began the story, we saw that God made everything very, very good. And then he, he created his treasure, humans. And then humans turned their back on God, and instead of punishing them, God said, I will send someone. I will send someone to crush the head of the serpent, even as the serpent strikes him. And that all the families on earth, God chose Abraham's family and said, this, this Savior is going to come from your line. God set up a, a series of sacrifices. He said that when there is sin, there must be death. And the soul who sins is the one who will die. But I will accept a perfect sacrifice, a substitute in the place of sinners. That's why he set up that system of sacrifice. Th then God came and said, David, now it's going to be your family that, that, that has the promised one. And when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law. And as Jesus grew up, he knew what death was. At that point in time, Israel was not an independent nation. They were part of the Roman Empire. And the Romans were brutal. They wanted you to know that if you rebelled against them, bad things were going to happen. And so anyone that they, they could, they would crucify, and they'd put on the main roads. This is what's going to happen to you if you mess with us. So every time Jesus went to Jerusalem, at least once a year, oftentimes more often, Jesus would see those people dying on those crosses, and he knew, that's what's going to happen to me. Jesus knew what sacrifice was. He saw his, his family took care of a lamb. And then one day his father took his hands and put his hands on the lamb's head and confessed his sins. And then his father slit the lamb's throat and the blood stained that white wool. And Jesus knew that he was the lamb of God that that lamb pointed forward to. He knew. Chapter 5. Sacrifice. Jesus ticked a lot of people off. He taught, you are not good enough. You do all these things for God, but that, it's not enough. You're still sinning, and that really ticked off the people that thought that they only needed a little bit of help. Yeah, yeah, I need, I need the sacrifices, but you know what? I, I'm, I'm mostly good. I, I got at least a chunk of it. I can help God out. Jesus told them, no, you're not. And yet at the same time, Jesus spent time with the scum, and he gave them forgiveness and grace, and the leaders were so angry that they plotted to kill him. They plotted literally for years until finally they had enough. And they arrested Jesus. They put him on trial for lies. Took him to the Roman governor Pilate and essentially blackmailed Pilate into letting them crucify him. And so on that Friday, Pilate handed Jesus over. His back was already meat and blood. He had already been beaten so severely. He, blood dripped into his eyes from a crown of thorns that had been pounded into his head. And then they laid the cross beam of the cross across his shoulders. His blood stained the wood. Flies buzzed around and tried to get into the open wounds. 
he stumbled out to Golgotha, the place of the skull. The crossbeam was dropped. They threw him onto the piece and they stretched out his arm. They pierced his wrists. And even then, Jesus breathed out grace. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Even for the people that didn't care about his pain, even for the apathetic, even for the people actually actively trying to destroy him, forgive them. They hoisted him up, placed the crossbeam on the upright, crossed his ankles, and pounded in that last nail. There was not a square inch of Jesus' body that did not cry out in pain. And then the suffering of his soul began. If Jesus was going to be your substitute, he not only had to live the life that you didn't, but he had to die the death that you deserved. Not just the death of the body, but the death of the soul. And so God the Father turned his back on God the Son. And Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when he knew that all had been accomplished, when he knew that he had paid the price, he cried out, It is finished. It's done. There's nothing left for you to pay. There's nothing left of sin in you anymore. All of Jesus suffered for all of you. What is it your soul is guilty of? His soul suffered for it. The guilt's been removed. <coughs> what is the guilt that your body bears? His body took the pain for you. And it is gone as far as the east is from the west. You can't help him. He did it. It's finished. This is the scarlet thread that ties all of history together. All the way back from Adam and Eve and all the way to you. It is that scarlet thread of Jesus' blood paying for you. His grace for you. This is what the story is about. The prince has come and he has paid the price to reclaim his treasure, to reclaim you. It is finished. And then Jesus bowed his head and gave up his spirit. But death was not the end of his story. But that's for next week. For now, please stand. And now the peace of God that is better than anything we can understand will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.